Good evening, race fans. It's that time again for Burt Wojcik, Justin Snyder, and Earl Hoon Jr. to bring you all the latest news in the Spring Car world right here on PA Spring Car Live. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another great episode of PA Sprint Car Live right here on Bear Hill Gang TV. You know me. I'm Earl Hoon Jr., and you all know my trusty sidekick, Mr. Burt Wojcik himself. Burt, how you doing, buddy? Good, Earl. How you doing today, bud? Pretty, do, uh, pretty good. Busy, busy week for you. Uh, BAPS Motor Speedway has some uh, breaking news here earlier in the week, and I'd like to thank you for going down there and doing a great job. Oh, I tell you what. That was just awesome down there yesterday. Uh, got to thank Colton and Scott for putting that on yesterday. One of the, it's kind of a monumental thing here. I mean, they touched on it yesterday. When has an actual track sponsored a track for a full season? Right. Of course, the news is we were talking about here. The Dover International Speedway has partnered with the Babs Motor Speedway for a season-long partnership, which will go on with the uh, Articat All-Star Circuit Champions meant by Mobile One. The Justice Snyder Salute to the Troops coming up on August 26th, which is a NASCAR off weekend, Earl. hey oh, that's going to be good stuff. Hopefully they can get some NASCAR talent in there, and it's going to be a great show. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are off with another great episode of PA Sprint Car Live. We have a great lineup of drivers on tonight. We have last week's winner at Williams Grove Speedway for the first edition of the Yellow Breaches 500. Ryan Taylor, he's going to join us a little bit. And then a Hall of Famer. It doesn't get much old school of the old school with this cat. Danny Smith, he's going to join us a little bit later. I'm looking forward to this because whenever we have these old school guys on, there are so many great stories that come out of these guys. You know, they've been on the road for so many years, like doing this research. Danny has been on the road since he was six or out racing since he was 16 years old. One of the original outlaws in 1978, Earl. I mean, this guy is, what, a decade older than both of us. I mean, it's or well, been racing for almost a decade before you and I were even born. That makes us feel a little, probably make him feel a little bit old. Don't uh, a, a, little a little bit, bit, but you know what? Old, not old. He can still kick some ass. Yes, he can. I mean, he still he picked up a couple wins last year. I believe three, four, ten wins last year. Yep. Uh, so I mean, he can still win. Um, especially in that four car. So I mean, we don't have to mind talking coming into Pennsylvania a little bit more here. But uh, our first guest tonight, Ryan Taylor. What a whatever kind of redemption I would think about him or, uh, last week at the Grove. You know, last year had some motor issues at the start of the year, kind of kept him out about half the season, but came back pretty strong there towards the end and uh, kind of went full circle to win uh, last week at the Grove. Absolutely, and he did a great job and great segue, by the way. Uh, yeah, As we are going to do our weekend recap presented by X1 Race Cars, and we will start it off at the famous Williams Grove Speedway from last Friday. We said it, Ryan Taylor, he's going to join us a little bit. He picked up the win over Mark Smith, TJ Stutz, Anthony Macri, and Trey Starks. As we look at the highlights here on the TV presented by DirtStation.com, make sure you check them out. And look at that top five, Bert. That's I mean, unique. that is a perfect, unique top five right there. And young guns here. But let's look at look at this here in the video. Second week in a row, same corner, same situation. Brian Monteith up on his head at the Grove. He has yet to make it out to turn number two in an A-Main event. And he's been fast, though, for the A-Main, though. Absolutely. He's been he, – I mean, I mean, let's just break this down as we watch the highlights. What an interesting race it was. The track was real fast. We had a lot of wet weather during the day and during the week, and, and I don't think the sun really came out as what some people were hoping for all day. It came out, shocker, closer to warm-ups. And but, the wind picked up, too, then. And, and the wind picked up, shocker. But let's just break this down. I mean, looks like Lance DeWeese, he had the fastest car during that feature. He was passing people on a one-groove racetrack, okay? Then him and Mark Smith were battling for second, and they got together off of turn number four. I tell you what, that was nuts. That's kind of the change point of that race here because if him and Mark Smith don't make contact there, I think we're talking about the 69K in victory lane, not the 20. But you know what? It's one of those things where, and even look, Greg Hodnett here uh, punctures a uh, left rear tire here. So all the big guys were seen to have some kind of struggle on Friday night at the Grove, Earl. Absolutely. It's just, it's just crazy. Uh, I'm excited for tomorrow night. Yes, I do believe we are going to get in tomorrow night. It's supposed to be at least 60 degrees during the day. I know they're calling for some snow here in, uh, overnight in the early morning hours, but that sun is going to come out, and it's going to warm up and be another great, fantastic day for another great Friday night of racing at Williams Grove. Then Saturday, hey, we got a couple, uh, two tracks running on the oh, same day, Bert, we are boy. back to that. I never thought we'd see the day of that, Earl. No doubt about it. Well, uh, why don't you uh, start this one up after your uh, 
Your moneymaker track, the Port Royal Speedway. The Port Royal Speedway, the Speed Palace. Everybody went up the Route 322 to go to Juniata County and head over to Port Royal. And what a great race that was. Lance Dewey's he picked up another win at Port Royal Speedway. Well, I'm I'm going to be completely honest with you here. The second I saw the 69K on the front row, I'm just like, write the check. <laughs> I mean, there is – once they get on that front row, that's it. There's no – But you know no what? Jason Schultz, he I'll give it own. to him. He held his own. He was there the whole race. He led – Two laps, and watch out for this guy as Jason Schultz did finish second. Say that name five times fast. <laughs> over one of the legends up at Port Royal, Mike Wagner, then Greg Hodden, and Dylan Sisney. At one time, Dylan Sisney had the fastest car on the track, and he was working the top side of one and two. And in the middle of three and a four, he was passing cars. I thought he was going to contend for the win. Then, unfortunately, you reading into his social media a little bit later, he said that he uh, sealed over a right rear tire. Oh, well. The way it looks here on the track, this is the first I actually got to see the highlights. It does look like it took a little bit of rubber down, Earl. So, I mean, was it more like a daylight surface error? Or did oh, it yeah. Kinda, you know, it, you know what? It, it, it was the first race of the season. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and it they was, started early, too. Uh, we started early. The sun was still very high up in the air. We, uh, if you notice, there was still a little bit of uh, twilight mm -hmm. uh, when we started the uh, uh, A main event. And, and it was just a racy slick. When that track's over, it becomes racy. Um, but however, with maybe a handful of laps to go, it took a little, a little bit of rubber. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say it took a lot of rubber because I do believe that the track really cleaned off, mm -hmm. and that was just a preferred line because the late model races were were tremendous. Well, they're always tremendous out there. Right? Ab absolutely, and uh, yeah, the the race surface just cleaned off, took a little bit of rubber, and shocker, sixty nine k. They know the setup for a slick race tracks. They do, and they're money at Port Royal. Let's be honest here. I mean, they're money everywhere. They are. I mean. Like I said, they probably would have won Friday night down at the Grove if yeah. you know they didn't get caught up with Mark Smith here. And then, like I said, the second you saw that 69K, it was on that front row. I'm just like, write the check. I, it's That's just how good they are at their port row. You get them anywhere in that top ten, yeah. I you almost have to write the check towards it. <laughs> you never know. It's a long season. It is. And that was just the opener. Oh, yes. Yes, it was. And then I'll send this over to you, Bert. Lincoln Speedway also ran for their spring championship. Five yeah, grand to win. You know what? This was a fun race to be at, you know. A little bit of cool or cool down uh, pretty well on a Saturday night there. Danny Dietrich got to an early lead over Freddie Raymer, but there he is, that number 21 car, Brian Monteith. Boy, I tell you what, was he the show or what on Saturday night? Running at the edge, of course. And I'm a little disappointed in myself here. I said to Christopher Bell yesterday, so uh, how did everything go down at Lincoln? Because I was in the infield uh, shooting pictures with uh, Phil and all the uh, great photographers down at uh, Lincoln Speedway. And uh, I said, and he said that um, he wrecked. He wrecked him. Like, I didn't even take notice that he was the only caution in this race because you're almost too busy having to watch Monteith and where's Dietrich at. Yeah. Because that's the showdown at Lincoln Speedway. You see it here. Monteith, he just – he was too much for Dietrich. Just absolutely overpowered Dietrich coming off a of two there. Then a little bit of lap traffic. I almost kind of wonder what would have happened if that yellow never came out. Would it have been the Monteith and Dietrich show? Could they have been battling out for the last 15 laps of the spring championship? But, of course, that yellow did come out. Brian Monteith just absolutely ran away with it over Danny Dietrich, Freddie Raymer, Lucas Wolf, and Alan Crimes with the top five finish. I'm glad to see Alan Crimes get another uh, top five, hopefully making some money to get another uh, motor built for later in the season. You know what? Think about that. The last couple weeks here, Monteith has flipped at the Grove, has won. Crimes, after he built or uh, blew the motor, has had back-to-back -to -back top five finishes, including the podium, the last race at Lincoln before this one. Crazy. It hey, is. you know what? Let's let's break down the field that went to Lincoln. I mean, we had a great field uh, of drivers up at Port Royal, a lot of invaders, but you also had some great invaders down at Lincoln Speedway you know, as well. You know what? I'm actually going to be saying I'm a little disappointed in the fields. I thought we were actually going to get more cars than what we did at both places. I thought Port was, with the way the invaders are coming out and some of the local guys, I thought we might have got 30 cars at both places, but it didn't work out that way. I believe, what, you got 26? 27. 27 up there, and we only got 25 down to Lincoln Speedway, but... It's one of those things where it's quality over quantity. We had enough for a full field, enough to run a Conti. I mean, the only bad part about the Lincoln deal was they only sent one guy home. Why? Why would you only send one guy home? I don't, I don't get that. Name of the game, bud. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's kind of weird. But, hey, whatever it is, uh, still provide some great racing all weekend long uh, in Central PA here, Earl. Absolutely. So, with last weekend being complete, we were going to go to the hoseheads.com Central PA points update. Presented by Champion Racing Oil, and obviously this is the Central PA Sprint Car Points Series, and this is on Hoseheads. Check them out at Hoseheads.com. Little shakeup after March 17th. Greg Hodnett has a 134-point lead over Lucas Wolf. Yeah, and here's a little interesting stat that we have in this week's service presented by Williams Grove Speedway. 
is that Greg Hodnett is the only or has finished in top 10 in every race he's competed in so far in 2018 in Central PA. That's why he's leading the hose heads. Uh, uh, Central PA points right now. And that's how you get championships yeah, as well. Exactly. Ask, you know, ask Donnie Schatz. Yeah, that's how you do it. It's consistency like Absolutely. we talked about on the show. You can go out and get 20 wins all year long every time out. But if you don't get those top five, top tens, you're not doing anything. That's not going to win you championships. And, and, and folks, it's not a runaway. I mean, we're still earlier in the season. Greg Hodnett, uh, he may have 134 points, but as we look all the way down at fifth, Kyle Moody, he's only 47 points behind. So it's anybody's game come April. And the top three are separated by nine points, and the guys and uh, the guys behind him in second and third both have one or two wins, which are Brian Monteith and Lucas Wolf. And Danny Dietrich also has a win so far this year. Absolutely. It's a great top five. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you are located in the fully injected motorsports fan zone. When we bring on our both of our guests here this evening, make sure you type up, up a question for Ryan Taylor and Danny Smith and put them in the comment section below. But we're going to take a real commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have this week's Dirt presented by Williams Grove Speedway. Stay tuned. It's showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. For the first time in 2018, the Williams Grove Speedway go back-to-back -back with a complete racing program this Friday night, April the 6th. Last week, Brian Taylor picked up his second career Lawrence Chevrolet 410 sprint car feature win at the Grove. Could we see an surprise winner like Ryan? Or will current Lawrence Chevy 410 sprint car points leader Greg Hahn to pick up his first win of the season and second $500 star Yellow Breach's 500 race of the season. Also on the car, see if Jeff Halligan can pick up his second straight H.J. Tone 358 sprint car win of the season. The Williams Grove Speedway is just located one mile from the Lisburn Road exit of Route 15 and minutes from Mechanicsburg and Dillsburg. For more information on upcoming events and up-to-the-minute news, follow Williams Grove on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, or log on to WilliamsGrove.com. The Williams Grove Speedway is a proud supporter of PA Sprint Car Live right here on Burial Gang TV. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That Nat will bring us to this week's Dirt presented by Williams Grove Speedway. And a couple of fun facts here for you. So far, our average car counts have gone up over the last uh, couple of events. We are up now to 25 thanks to the 31 car field that Williams Grove had last week. That surprised me. 31 cars at the Grove. I actually thought we were going to get a little more, to be honest really? with you. Yeah, I really did. I thought we were going to at least get enough of four heat races, which is 32. You know, to be honest with you, I thought the Colts actually could keep some guys away, but it looks like it actually kind of helped bring some guys in, especially that $500 start for that Yellow Breaches 500, which we will see again tomorrow night down at the Williams Grove Speedway. Take two. I love it. It's Boom. a great thing. And, and uh, speaking of tomorrow and this weekend, we got another driver that's going to start his season off. He uh, indicated earlier this week that Robbie Kendall, he's going to compete at Williams Grove and Port Royal this weekend. Yeah, that's going to be pretty cool to see uh, the 55 come out this weekend at some point here. So uh, kind of interesting to see Robbie come to the Grove. We haven't seen him at the Grove too often the last couple of years. And now, uh, you know, he's been really kind of making his home down at the Lincoln Speedway. Um, so I guess he kind of wants to venture out. Go see what everything uh, has to do up there, especially on those half miles, and maybe make a run at that Tuscarora 50. Absolutely, and uh, he came in for the opener at Lincoln Speedway. Cole Duncan, he picked up uh, the win at the Atomic Speedway out in Chillicothe, Ohio, over a 20-field card, or, yeah, over a field of 20 cars, and good job to Cole Duncan as well. Yeah, Cole has been, he just dominates Ohio. I mean, he's just, he's that good. I mean, it's just, he has a great... Uh, Great Ohio program, and it seems like, you know, whenever he comes in here, he learns a little bit, and he can, uh, you know, take that out to Ohio and maybe uh, learn something. Absolutely, and uh, here, here, this man is going to come in here a little bit later in the season when the Lucas Oil ASCS 360 division comes in. Blake Hahn, he took home $13,000 in the NCRA 360 event at the 81 Speedway in Wichita, Kansas, which I saw highlights of that on Speed Shift TV. It was a great race. Do you see some of those names ever out there? Oh, and, and Bill Baylog. Bill Baylog, yep. Darren Pittman, as you said. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some really, really good names out there. Uh, right in the 360 show. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. It, it was, it was a great. And I mean, Terry Carl out there, Brian Brown. Does that surprise you that some of these guys went out to run the 360? I mean, yes, it's 13 grand to win, but does it surprise you that some of those guys stayed out over Easter break to run 360s instead of maybe coming a little bit east to run four tens? Hey, you know what? They, you never can. <laughs> they, uh, they get paid to race. Mm -hmm. So regardless if, I mean, Darren Pittman, 
he was already uh, on the West Coast because mm-hmm. of California. They're in Arizona this weekend. So why not just stay out yeah. there coming all the way, coming across the country to the east? Why not just pick up a race out there and go for the win? I, I like it. I mean, and if you have someone that can run a 360 or give you a 360, go for it. That's the way I look at it. Absolutely. And the biggest event uh, so far this year come April at the Man- the Mansfield Speedway Sprint Car World Series the deadline was the second of this month, and so far, boys, we have 73 sprint car teams confirmed so far for this race. And if someone makes some news this week, Tim Schaefer said he's going to be out there. Uh, if someone in the fully ejected motorsports fan zone can kind of answer this for us, is um, how is Tim Schaefer going to be able to do this with being a full-time outlaw driver? Crazy. I don't know. I, I, don't I would know. love maybe, to know. Uh, maybe someone in the in fully ejected motorsports fan zone can help us out here, but we're, we were talking about this is like, I thought they're kind of binded to run the full Outlaw Tour if you go pa- uh, have a platinum uh, membership. Contract. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that works out. Uh, hopefully, that everybody can get that straightened out. But I'm glad to see uh, Tim Schaefer is part of those 73 teams that are uh, from 14 states so far. And obviously, some of the big names, as we did mention, Tim Schaefer, Joey Saldana, Brian Brown being part of them, Kerry Madsen, Billy Baylog, James McFadden. There's a name, James McFadden. He's going to be coming in soon, boys. Ah, oh, the PA Aussie coming in soon here. A little bit earlier than what uh, he normally comes in. So, uh, And, hey, he broke some news this week. I guess their, uh, their team in Australia is losing the Milwaukee sponsorship from what I heard. Really? I, that's, what I, that's what I heard, uh, that uh, they're dropping that. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a big name sponsorship. I wonder why. I, I don't know. We're going gonna, gonna to have to look into that. Why well, I think we might have to when we have the PA Aussie in the show here soon. And, obviously, a couple local tracks. As of Wednesday, Trailway Speedway has canceled their practice racing events for the week due to Mother Nature. Shocker. Let's talk a little bit about Mother Nature. <laughs> um, from what we understand now, the latest forecasts are going to call for some snow uh, maybe rain a little bit mixed when we're all sleeping tonight, but yet it's supposed to get really warm tomorrow. The sun's supposed to come out, so I see Williams Grove getting it in. I see it. I, I can as long as it this whatever happens on Saturday doesn't come in until the overnight. There's a good chance we can get that in tomorrow night. Um, the question is Saturday though. Saturday, Justin. I mean, they're calling for snow here. Uh, it's, they're saying now it's going to mainly stay south, right where the Mason Dixon line, right where Lincoln Speedway is. So the question is, with cold temperatures, do we see any racing on Saturday? I know BAPS already canceled their Saturday night. They sure did. And um, I think uh, if it was me, if I was smart, I think I would uh, – I don't think it's nece- really necessary, honestly, but I think their tracks are – obviously, they're going to try. It's on the schedule. They're not going to not try. But uh, I, I don't think it looks promising. I think uh, BAPS may have a better shot for Sunday uh, as, you know, that's kind of the, one of their premier events. It's a big event for them yeah. for the year, so I think they're definitely going to try to get that in. The Grove's probably got a good shot tomorrow. It's going to be awfully cold. Um but with Lincoln already bumping their start time up, you know, they're already preparing for it. So I think it wouldn't be a shocker if they don't race at all. Yeah, but you know what? I'm bumping that up an hour to they're calling for 30 degree temps. Uh, I, don't I don't think like that. that I don't think that's a good move. Well, I think well, But Grant, if you get it in, hey, what do we know? We're just yeah, race fans. We don't know anything. And um yeah, I I know. Uh so anyway, um <laughs> Ryan Taylor Snapchatting us back here, folks, oh, and uh, oh, we got some. Oh, we got Ryan some Taylor, if you're bud. Snapchatting, you better stand by. Yeah, and answer you better the phone. get ready, bud. Uh, get the gym tan laundry uh, stuff on here. <laughs> so, anyways, um, but yeah, I think now the question is too is that I don't see Lincoln run. I'm sorry, I just can't see that happening. Port Royal, I think, is the best chance to run on Saturday. What about Sunday though? Bass Motors Speedway is supposed to open with the Bass Ford Tens this weekend. Yeah, and they broke some news. Hopefully they can get in Mother Nature cooperate that. Like Justin indicated, they did cancel their Saturday night program, but they have indicated that tomorrow on the little track they're going to try to get in, and on Sunday, the big one uh, for the 410 Sprints, it's the opener. They're going to try to get that in as well. Did you guys see the picture Matt put up this week about or after his uh, Saturday night's races? Yeah. Oh, my God, that place looked immaculate. Yeah, it did. It I, looked- I can't. I mean, unfortunately, I won't be there, but i got to work. But uh, it's going to be, I hope, I wish all the well to all the drivers. Good luck to Scott and Colton. Hopefully the fans turn out, the driver car counts turn out, and uh, we'll be able to talk about it here on the show next Thursday. I hope so. I really do. Absolutely. Well, folks, we're going to take another commercial break. Uh, break our Bert, we're going to uh, oh, Yeah, man. Our boy Phil, he's going to tune up another commercial. And when we come back, joining us on the Moose's LC Hotline, it's going to be last week's feature winner at the Grove, Ryan Taylor. <laughs> Stay tuned.
Good evening, race fans. Derek Snyder here from Pace Performance. Pace Performance is your complete source for all of your automotive needs. The nation's leading retailer of Chevy Performance Parts is also home to thousands of aftermarket performance parts, regardless of your vehicle's manufacturer. Visit PacePerformance.com to shop 24-7 and see the largest selection at one convenient location. And thank you for tuning in to Beer Hill Gang TV. Welcome back, folks. This guy's already cracking jokes. He's going to join us here right here on the Moose's LZ Hotline. Ladies and gentlemen, last week's feature winner at Williams Grove, Ryan Taylor joins us. Ryan, thank you for uh, taking some time out of your busy commercial. I know it's all about Jim Tan Laundry, but uh, <laughs> thank you for coming on the show, bud. Yeah, no problem, guys. Dude, congrats on the early season win at Williams Grove, man. Yeah, that was, uh, it was definitely exciting. and uh, I mean, I'm sure it's pretty much the way everybody wants to kick their year off, so... There's, there's nothing wrong with winning on the first night out for yourself. Now, the last time you won at Williams Grove, you had a bit of controversy there. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you really wanted to make that your first win ever, so I'm sure this one had to be quite the, uh, you know, kind of retribution. Well, yeah, and that's, uh, I think that's probably, like, the first thing I said in victory lane, and when Bruce Ellis, like, greeted me there, I was like, well, we won this time, and, <laughs> uh, and I do that, too, you know, like, that's, that's the that's the thing we see the deal. Um, it was it was just all around a good night. Now, as we're joking around back here, Ryan, apparently I said I was running my mouth there, which I was, and you uh, you definitely earned that win on uh, Friday night. But <laughs> what, <laughs> what? I thought um, we were really really good friends here, and you post some pictures on my Facebook, and then and then I'm like, oh, excited to tune in and talk to you, and you're sitting there saying how you know if if. Lanston has been out. He probably would have passed me in one race. So. Oh, 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 boy. Well, I guess the friendship's over, bud. Sorry about that. But, <laughs> I'm going to start having to hide my, your photos from my timeline. I, I guess you're going to have to, man. Sorry about that. But anyway, <laughs> no, um, Friday, uh, Friday night, though, the, the track itself seemed like it wasn't terrible, but, yeah, it seemed like that bottom groove was really, really fast on the uh, around the bottom there. I just think the track was very dynamic in the fact that one and two is so different from three and four in surface condition. Um, so, you know, everybody was struggling. You saw how many people almost get over. You saw guys like Montez that did get over. Uh, in dirty air, one and two was a handful. Um, and it proved itself with Montez flipping over again like that. But um, three and four, on the other hand, was slick and, and was pretty hard packed and dusty. So I think we were fortunate enough that we kind of – set up for getting through three uh one and two pretty good and then and then just made it work and float through three and four and worked out well now another question i have to ask is is that tire down there in three just kept coming out and <laughs> biting people left and right Did, was that in the back of your mind at all that uh hey you know i gotta kind of move my lineup just a hair so i don't hit that tire so uh like bruce ellis asked me in victory lane he's like hey was there any you know mistakes you made or things we didn't see and i said well I almost about killed that hot tire down there. Like the first lap of, I think it was a heat race. I went in there and there and spun out or something like that. It happened right away in the beginning of that heat race. He hit it. He hit it first, and then I almost clobbered it again. And um, man, it was it was definitely different. That's for sure. That is for sure for you fans that are just tuning into the show. We have last week's feature winner at Williams Grove for the Yellow Breaches 500, the first part of that. Ryan Taylor, he joins us in the Moose's LZ Hotline. If you have any questions for Ryan Taylor, make sure you put them in the fully injected motorsports fan zone. That is the comment section below. And Ryan, uh, since you did pick up the win last uh, Friday at the Grove, does that mean you're going to go back tomorrow and uh, try to get your uh, second win in a row? Uh, I don't think we're planning on going back tomorrow. Um, it's looking like it's supposed to be like 40s, low 40s and like 25 mile per hour winds. So, um, I'm operating on one motor for the season here and trying to just manage that as best as possible. There's, there's plenty of races out there when the weather's going to be nice and we got to try to run them too and be able to run a whole year, not just run all the races in the beginning of the race, uh, year, but, um, definitely going to get to the Grove, uh, more often this year throughout the season. Good deal. I'm sure I know I talked to you last year, and I think it was part of your plan until you guys had some issues, but those Yellow Breaches races really make it worthwhile for you guys to come out and visit Williams Grove more often. Yeah, unless you're the 07 car and you're going to post pictures of your check on Facebook about it and complain. But it's, uh, 
it was it was interesting to see that and and people's reaction to that, what they said, how they got their check in and they paid the same at eleven. So um, I don't know. It's uh, it's nice to get a, a, a good race to start, but if it pays all the way up through there, I mean, obviously our goal is to run top ten every race that we go to. It's just uh, they do that to get the get the cars to the back of the field, I think, and and get some people showing back up there. But you know, they're they're making an effort at least, so that's that's good on their part. Oh, for sure, and uh, well, that's some that's some new news. I didn't even hear anything about that, boy, Ryan. I tell you what, you're uh, you're causing a stir here already tonight, bud. But uh, <laughs> what does the rest of your season looks like look like here? I know you said you're working on one motor this year. Um, do you have plans to kind of run port weekly, or are you just going to kind of just pick and choose what races you're going to go do this year? Uh, yeah, like uh, the second part out there, we're going to pick and choose a little bit. Um, our average thing is probably going to be at port. Uh, on nights or on Friday nights when we can make it work and get to the Grove, um, we'll probably end up at the Grove and maybe, you know, maybe hit a second race for the weekend. But you know, most likely uh, we'll probably just be running once a week and picking and choosing where we're going to be for that week. Very good. Now let's talk a little bit about CP Carrillo. You know, last year the sponsor came on board and you had a special paint scheme which they loved, and you were only picking at that at uh, you know select shows the bigger shows you were running the cp carrillo colors is that gonna is that a full-time sponsor with you now this year and is that are that is that going to be the permanent colors uh you're going to be running yeah i mean primarily i still have that other car that's yellow and, and got that going on um that's just a separate body and wing setup for the most part uh but realistically cp has been a big part of my team for the past eight years now i believe and um I just did that more as a, you know, appreciation thing. And um, it's kind of snowballed into a little bit more since then. And I couldn't be more excited about it. Um, we got some, some other new sponsorship stuff going on this year. And uh, they're, they're definitely up in their game there. And then um, bringing on uh, David Abreu with Avery Vineyards. Uh, we got him on the front wing there. So um, that's pretty exciting. It's just fun stuff. That is pretty exciting. You know, I'm glad you uh, – nice segue, by the way, because <laughs> how in the hell did you end up a Pennsylvania car with a California sponsor just like uh, Abreu Venues, man? How did that happen? Well, like, I don't know if you know, but C.P. Carrillo is from Irvine, California. Right. Abreu Vineyards is from um, St. Helena, California. So I'm, like, split. My, half my car is California. Half my car is probably PA. So uh, Giant Finishing, they're from Chicago. Uh been talking to another uh, another couple companies one that's out in uh, indianapolis indiana and uh also talking to, to the guys out at cali cranks out in ohio too uh looking at some opportunities for doing some stuff with them so you know it's uh you gotta you gotta market yourself and you gotta just be presentable all the time and keep yourself looking good and i think that's what you know i kind of thrive on trying to do is you know not just put results up but then bring a solid image to people and uh, be able to market their business for for them yeah your graphics guy does an all right job uh he seems to do half the some pretty decent work i would say i wouldn't i was gonna go half these but you know what i'll say that uh he does some pretty good work for you ryan <laughs> it's about as good as the guys that uh, interview me i'd say <laughs> <laughs> oh what a fella no but uh how is everything going with uh your graphics business though bud uh right now i'm part-time with that stuff i started working for sherman williams automotive finishes and uh, I'm doing that full time. I'm out on the road for sales. I'm in Central Pennsylvania, in and out of body shops all the time, um, just trying to help out and uh, and help people's business grow with uh, auto body paint. But um, I'm doing the lettering on the side, kind of part time, and and more selective than anything. You know, uh, working with some of the people that I really like and enjoy doing work for with guys like Justin Whittle uh, and Tom Whittle. They're great people, and I like keeping their stuff looking fresh and clean. So. It's just a. Uh, it, I want to say it's more of a hobby at this point, but it's it's uh, it's still fun. Now, as you know, you mentioned you do have a lot of those sponsors that are from out of state and out of the area. How do you sell these guys on coming into Central PA? And you know, obviously, you are going to pick and choose, so you're not. You don't have plans to go to like a Knoxville. You don't have. I'm assuming you're not going to like Mansfield. How do you sell right. these out of town sponsors and say, you know, hey, this is going to be worth your while to come into Central PA? I think it's built on relationships more than anything. Um, it's built on just being a genuine person and, you know, 99.9% of people that are sponsoring race cars out there or owning teams aren't getting, you know, a ton back from it. Um, I'm trying to bring some sort of value back to it. 
And I think there's a huge marketplace with that, you know, through social media that's out there, whether it be Instagram, uh, Facebook fan pages, um, merchandising, all that kind of stuff. So I try to utilize and, and leverage some of that stuff to, to show some numbers of, hey, I'm not just reaching fans that are at the track, but we're also reaching people online. Um, so if they really want to dig in and talk some metrics about it, then we can look at it from that vantage point. But um, when it when it gets down to it, it's it's going to PRI and not asking for sponsorships, but meeting the people that the product you use and, and shaking their hand and saying thank you. And then that kind of snowballs and turns into something down the road. But it doesn't happen overnight. I know when I when I first started out, I worked so hard to try to get sponsors and put packets together and design stuff left and right. And that's, you know, it's all good, but it takes time. It takes time to, like, gain yourself a little bit of a name. And I think that, you know, at this point now, I actually have somewhat of a following a little bit, and I'm able to utilize that. And, and people have seen that, you know, I, I can put a good image out there for them. And, and you do a hell of a job at that. Uh, that's one big thing you do. You know, you put a hell of a car together, hell of a paint scheme, and you also know how – to promote yourself and pr promote your partners that are on that car with you, Ryan. Now, let's talk a little bit. You know, when you first started to race, you, you were in modifieds, and you were a regular at the Grandview Speedway. Then all of a sudden, you decided to jump into sprint cars. You know, we're having a lot more shows here in the mid-state area uh, with modifieds. Is there any possibility that, hey, if somebody opens up a, mod a modified ride for you, would you take it? Oh, my God. I'd be thrilled to do that. It'd be awesome. Um done it before i raced modified there for four years and then made the leap into the sprint cars and uh you learn a lot with them you learn how to race close and that kind of thing but um yeah something like at dusty or whatever uh, you know even up at court there yeah. um it would it would probably take a lot for that to come together i don't normally get reached out too often to drive someone else's car <laughs> you know primarily stick to my own stuff but um if, if there was an offer on the table and it was a good enough you know car to jump in and felt safe then and that's something that I'd probably take advantage of, yeah. Oh, well, I'm sure there's a couple of rides out there. We might, might be able to uh, we poke some drivers up with some 410 <laughs> rides around here. Maybe we can hook someone up with a modified ride up here. But uh, w let me ask you this, Ryan, here. You know, you do live right near the Grandview Speedway up there in uh, Percocet. What would it mean for you if you could go out there and say Speed Week or the Articat show to get a win at your home track uh, in a 410 sprint car? Um, that'd be huge. That's, that's a really big goal of mine is try to win at like your, your quote unquote hometown track kind of thing. Um, I feel like I've always just had terrible, terrible luck at Grandview. Uh, we've ended up, we ended up running fourth there last year when Larson was in town and, and, you know, that's kind of when I started talking and, and kind of started forming a relationship with Rico and stuff. And, uh, one thing leads to another there, but I just think if I could win at Grandview, it would be great because you'd have friends, their family, um, not many of my family members, you know, are, are willing to travel out to Port Royal on a weekly basis to come watch a race or anything like that. So, but Grandview is twice a year. I can normally pull them out and get them out there. Very cool. Well, thanks for letting us talk about Grandview because the only thing Bert loves more than Grandview is Danny Dietrich, but that's ah. awesome. But anyways, <laughs> um, wrong hey, um, oh. but no, I know you're, I know you're really excited. You want to watch that Jersey Shore reunion tonight. It's, uh, you got 24 yeah, I'm minutes. I'm disappointed in you, sir. I am very disappointed in you. <laughs> Why is that? Because you said you got to be off the air by eight o'clock to watch that. I mean, come on. I thought you were better than that, Ryan. I was just questioning what the timing of this was so I could plan my night. That's don't, all. Don't don't <laughs> let him lie. He told me he has it on DVR and <laughs> birds. Yeah, anyways, this is our situation right here to the left of me. Yeah, this is this is our situation. Ryan, uh, thank you for coming on the show, dude. Congrats on your big win, getting the monkey off your back early. Uh, I know I usually say something about the sponsors, but I think uh, we pretty knocked it, pretty much knocked it out of the ballpark with uh, presenting your sponsors. Good luck here in the rest of the year, and uh, keep up the great work, my friend. Yeah, thank you guys so much, and uh, thanks to all the fans that come out and support the races every week. Uh, us drivers, we, we really appreciate it, and you know, if, uh, if we can, we just want to make sure that we say thanks to them and um, appreciate their effort coming out and, and hanging out with us. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ryan. Good luck, bud. Take care, guys. Thanks, buddy. See you. Ryan Taylor just getting off the Mrs. LZ hotline, and uh, hey. Uh, that was fun. That was fun. That was. Ryan Taylor's always a great guy to talk to. One of our first guests last year, too. Yeah, on the show. Yep, yep sure enough. Yeah. What sure. we ever did with that sprayer? <laughs>
Don't know. <laughs> and I really don't care. I don't care. I either. don't care either. Nope, not me. But uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, we. I mean, that's where we formed a pretty good relationship with Ryan down here last year. Races extravaganza. Um, he does a great job with his uh, um, lettering business, Ryan Taylor Graphics, and then you know this. Uh, deal with CP Carrillo really kind of started a big buzz around here because that was one of the nicest looking cars we've seen anywhere last year and of course this year as well and now you really set it up with a uh, sponsorship with that uh, Abreu Vineyards that really surprised me seeing that Friday night Earl. hey but you know what that's what talent gets. They get great sponsors. And Ryan Taylor is definitely a great talent to have. Well, folks, we're going to take a uh, quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to let you know upon your votes for this week's Sweeney Cars uh, Driver of the Week, powered by Pace Performance, we're going to let you know who that driver is when you guys voted. Stay tuned. Sweeney Cars is proud to support Beer Hill Gang TV in 2018. Stay tuned to find out who is Sweeney Cars Driver of the Week. Powered by Pace Performance, Sweeney Cars, located in Youngstown, Ohio, has been the leading dealer for new Chevy, Buick, and GMCs for over 95 years. Sweeney Cars has an unbeatable selection of over 900 new and certified used cars. Top-rated customer service makes Sweeney your go-to for your next car or truck purchase. Sweeney is also a Pace Performance dealer for high-performance parts. To browse the latest selection or schedule an appointment, log on to SweeneyCars.com. Welcome back, race fans. Real quick, you upon your votes, you guys voted Lance DeWeese be the Sweeney Cars Driver of the Week, powered by Pace Performance. Shocker. You know, if this man wins, you know, he, he I think he's got the vote. Boy, did he run away with it or what? My God, I mean, when we put that out there, I mean, it started looking like it was going to be maybe between Ryan, maybe between uh, Brian, but... Boy, Lance's fan base just comes out in droves, doesn't it? Earl? Absolutely, and uh, we stirred up a little bit of a controversy Ooh, yes, we did. this weekend with his drivers. But uh, your fans, you'll get over that. Uh, you know, thank you for tuning in. But, however, joining us on the man. show, National Sprint Car Hall of Famer, one of the original outlaws, driver the number four, Mr. Danny Smith joins us. Danny, thank you for taking some time and joining us, my friend. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Pretty good, dude. Man, how you been? How you holding up during this winter? Oh, uh, we had a good winter. Uh, got everything ready pretty comfortably. Uh, during the off season, went to Florida for six weeks and ran down there, uh, mostly 360 stuff. Uh, we got 12, 12 races in down there in five weeks. Uh, made it home about a month ago and been sitting around in the rain, the snow, the wind, and the hail, and tornadoes, you name it, we've had it, so... <laughs> You've only got to race once since Florida, but uh, that's just the way it goes. Now, you talk about you start your season off. You started off earlier this year, and you did something that you've never done in your career, and you ran the Chili Bowl. Number one, sweet paint scheme. I know yeah. you've got to thank yeah. uh, Landon Simon and those guys for putting that deal together for you and giving you a car, but what was that experience like after all these years to finally get to the Chili Bowl? Yeah, well, the one main thing, I've never even been there. Uh when they started running that deal, I was going to Australia every year um, and I was always down there. Um, and then when I started taking a little time off going to Australia just because I was burnt out, I didn't want to go anywhere. So it was really cool to go see the place, uh, see the facility, how many cars they cram in that place and, uh, and still have enough room for a racetrack and, and got to race in it. That was pretty cool. Uh, we didn't, of course, we didn't get the results we wanted. We had a little engine problem on one of the nights, and that put us back in the J main or something. So, got to do it, have some fun, see some people I haven't seen for a long time, and and uh, had a had a blast. So, I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. Here's a little fun fact for you boys. Uh, you know, Danny Smith. He's talking about Australia. He was one of the first American-born drivers to compete in Australia during the off season. And is a six-time winner of the Warner Bowl Classic, which is one of the biggest prestigious races in Australia. Yeah, what's that like, Dan? You know, to be one of the first drivers to go over to Australia and be very competitive as an American board driver, but also win one of their biggest races down there six times. Yeah, yeah, I really wasn't one of the first ones, but um, you know, there been quite a few guys go before me. But I was, it's kind of about the time when. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't really social media then, but the the word got out about Australia. So I was kind of good timing where I got a lot of PR out of it. And I was one of the first to go back year after year after year after year. And I don't, you know, Donnie Shots would be pretty close for going 
uh, as many years of, as I have, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, of course, you get to go to a whole new country where they do everything back afterwards, way different to us, and, <laughs> and get on the racetrack, and, and uh, you know, everything was different there. Uh, tracks were a little different shape, smaller, rougher, a little more contact. Uh, rules were different. But, uh, man, over the years, I've created so many friends and so many fans over there, and it's a blast. I haven't been for a couple, three years, and um, I'd like to go back, and hopefully next year I'll think I'll go back and run a 360. I'm not real sure, but we might do that. Love it. For you fans that are just tuning in, we have Danny Smith. He's tuned, joining us here in the Moose's LZ Hotline. If you have any questions for Danny, make sure you put them in the comments section below. That is the Fully Injected Motorsports Fan Zone. Yeah, and Danny, you touched on this here a little bit. The rules down there are completely different. What's your thoughts on the uh, Australian rules compared to what we have up here in America? Now, they kind of kind of got their format kind of like ours now, uh, pretty close. Uh, when I first started going down there, they didn't time trial all. It, if you wanted to try to go for the track record, you just told them, and you went out there by yourself and, and tried to cut a hot lap for the track record. So, but now you know all the big paying shows, they time trials, and uh, they might run a two heat heat race format. Uh, you go out run, run, everybody runs around the heats, come back, just kind of mix them up to go out and run another round of heats and get points towards the final. Um, the engines, you know, were smaller. The wings were bigger. Uh, pretty much now the cars are, are identical to what we run here, 25 square foot wings and 410 motors. So uh, it's kind of – when I first started going, I was, I was in 82, 82, 83 season, uh, and I had a new game where everybody else had old, old cars, you know, and, and now they've caught up where if it's out here um, – Today, they can have it there in a couple of days. So they've caught up with their uh, cars and equipment, just just like we got. Just now, Danny, uh, you're a pretty straight yeah. shooter, and, and, you know, a lot of fans, they have a voice now, and it's called social media, and it's either a good thing or a bad thing. And, and you know, but the big thing you hear about, oh, you know, this racing sucks nowadays, you know. It's all about track surface. You know, the cars are identical. You don't see a lot of passing like you used to back in the day. What do you think? I mean, yeah, the, some of the fans, their opinion really doesn't matter, and some fans, their opinion does matter. But what I'm trying to get at here is, you know, what maybe rule changes would you like to see to make it maybe uh, more competitive like it used to be back in the day? Well, we're all running spec cars now. I mean, you Everybody can buy the same car that they that everybody else has, and, and we all got to run the same tires. Um, we all got 410 motors that are within 20, 30, 40 horsepower of each other. Uh, you know, back in the day, whoever built the best car and had the best driver usually won them all, but uh, now everybody's got the best car. And the, the young kids are coming up now, you know, with years of experience and quarter digits and micro sprints and and 600 mini sprints that shoot when they hit the track route 17 they've got six eight years of, of dirt track racing under the belt when when we started you, you didn't have that so it's kind of like formula one the faster they get the less passion there is and that's kind of where we're at uh what makes a good race now is when they hit it on the track when they got a little bit on the bottom and a little bit on the top and stick in the middle um, and that's hard to do for promoters, especially this time of year when it's just so wet. Yeah. But you know, it's a tough deal. I don't, you know, you, I don't know how you can open it up to bigger motors and just cost more money. And you could go back to open tires. I think that would be better. Give everybody a little more choice. But it's just everybody's so fast, and and when they get faster, they get closer together. That's true. Now, you were, as we mentioned, you were part of the original World of Outlaw series. You finished eighth in points that season in 1978. Take us through a little bit of your mind in 1978 when Ted Johnson comes around and says, all right, we're going to put together this touring series. We're going to run for at least 2,000 a race. I mean, did you ever imagine the sport would be like it is today as it was back then? No, kind of a funny thing, only a couple guys really knew about the outlaws. It, he kind of 
didn't go around and and publicize it much. Uh, he just kind of said, "Well, any race over two thousand win, we're going to call it points." And like I never heard of the World Outlaws even when I started the the season in '78. Um, and then they had a few, and then Cultural Bolas got a bag wagon, and he had a bunch of them, and then it got real popular real quick. And that's when it kind of started, hey, we're going to California. These guys are going to give you motels, and they're going to give you money, and you want to go? I said, heck yes. So <laughs> uh, kind of right about half of them that year, especially towards the end of the season, and um, got to hit the road and been hit the road ever since. So. You know, it really wasn't real organized at the start. You know, it it didn't come out in the race paper. Here we are, joining the World Outlaws. I think started joining after the first race. You know, I need 20 bucks for to sign you up. So uh, it it was just a a whim he had and something he wanted to do. And it it took a shot on on that one weekend at Dove's Bowl. And, uh, man, it took off like gangbusters. And uh, it's, you know, the top touring division in the United States, I think. I mean, count NASCAR, IndyCar, everybody. So it's a tough deal. Yeah. Now you're obviously, you're you're still racing, obviously. And, you know, you did come up in the age, you started doing this whole deal when, when you're Doug Wolfgangs, your Steve Kinsers, your Sammy Swindells. I mean, you've really seen the start to the finish here. And when you see a guy like Donnie Schatz nowadays out doing what he's doing, how does that compare to, say, what, Steve was doing back in the day. Do you think it's comparable, or is it is it part of the cars today? Is it is Donnie just that damn good? Well, I mean, you know, all the younger guys now are knowing what we used to feel like years ago, and Kinza kicked their ass every night. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, how, how can that how can that be? How can he do it? There got to be cheating. Well, back then there was no rules. You couldn't cheat. Right. You just got a butt kicked every night. So. uh <laughs> It was a it was this deal where hard two guys that had the, the passion to win got hooked up and everything worked out for them and uh, that's kind of what happened with Donnie. You know he he has that passion and then he's got what it takes and he's been fortunate enough to get with the right teams and of course Tony Stewart here in the last quite a few years so um, that that doesn't come along very often. Somebody like that, you know. Uh, I think it'd be a different story if they had Kyle Larson out there every weekend, uh, Christopher Bell out there every weekend. But you know, they're off making their millions right now. But they'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they always do come back, and they uh, support. They really do support the sport they love. Oh, they do. And now that kind of leads into this question I have here for you, Danny. Is that is there a young driver that you see up and coming that say, hey, you know? I see, you know, could be the next big name in this sport, like Larson or like Bell. Uh, somebody that's not um, really known is what you're talking about. Yeah, or like somebody you race with down to, in Ohio. Yeah, kind of, Ohio's kind of, uh, kind of, what do you want to call it, stabilized. I mean, you got some weekend racers and a few young kids not setting the world on fire, but uh, from what I see and what I've read and what I've heard about that Geo Selzy, what are he, 15, 16 years yep, old? Yep, you know, sure is. Uh, you know, sounds like he's on his way to be hit the big time, and, uh, you know, he might get grabbed up by NASCAR and get to go make names too, but, um, you know, they're out there. Uh, there's a lot of kids that, that will never get the chance because they, they don't get noticed because they're driving their – old war out race car and they can go as fast as it goes and do a good job but nobody knows it because they're not up front uh it's tougher and tougher nowadays to to get to the front but uh, i think you know that selfie kid looks like he's uh probably a young one to watch for right now now you know i i i'm not gonna i love reading your social media you got a bunch of people fired up here on april fools when you told everybody <laughs> you were gonna put steve kinzer in your car for mansfield <laughs> but um you know, do you, you know, obviously, you know, we're from Central PA, and, you know, at one time, I mean, you still are. You're kind of an outsider coming in here to Central PA. Over the years, do you have any maybe funny or cool stories that you could remember of coming into Central PA as a, maybe as an outlaw guy or as just a driver or any experiences? 
Yeah, well, there's a lot of them. Some of them I can't tell you now. We thought you were going to say that because uh, our buddy Phil Walter, he has a good friend, Bob Layton, and he was Mr. Bob. I don't know if you remember him, but he was telling us some good funny stories about you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, we'd always go hang out with Bobby Allen and hang around his shop, so there's always some good stories there. <laughs> um, but uh, like early, early 80, 1980, I just got the Kitty Riders ride. And I had to go to Bloomington, Indiana from, from Nashville to pick up uh, a Mark Todd, who's a mechanic, and he's going to go uh, on the eastern swing with me. So we went and rolled him up. He says, hey, we got to go get speed. I said, okay, because Carl had already left. So he's riding with us. I said, where is he? He goes, well, he should be getting out of jail about now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he got all tanked up and spent the night in jail. So we <laughs> we uh, rolled up to his apartment, and, and uh, he had just got there, and, and the clothes and the helmets and stuff was still flying out the second-story window where his girlfriend was throwing him out. So he grabbed what he needed and threw it in the, the Kenny Rogers rig, and we took off to uh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story. That is definitely, definitely. And now, speaking of Kenny, I mean, that was a big deal back in the 80s. You know, you had one of the top names in music in Kenny Rogers, you know, sponsoring you. What was that like to be able to run with Kenny Rogers and the uh, Gambler car? Yeah, Spurlock was, you know, he always had good race cars and had good drivers. And he started building his own cars. And with he, you know, he was uh, Kenny Rogers' concert promoter. So that's where the tie in came and called them gamers. And, and, uh, he wanted to hire somebody to beat Steve Kinder, so he hired me. We got to beat him a few times, but uh, there's been a lot of people trying to do that without <laughs> success. But, um, you know, it was a good three years. We had kind of the best of everything. And, and uh, I don't know. He kind of, after me, he put Wolfgang in it, and that didn't last very long. And then he helped some other teams with uh, that still were in the 18 game repellers like Bobby Davis and. Uh, and Brad Doty, but then I think he just kind of lost interest and um, got out of it and sold Gambler. And um, I talked to him. I actually saw him last fall. He had a, some. Uh, I got the original Kenny Rogers car that I drove in 1980 and won my first outlaw race. He, he found some stuff for that car, and we met him. And uh, he's still, he's retired now and just enjoying life and. And, uh, but it was a lot of fun back there and running for him, and we kind of had a shop we could do what we wanted. And kind of, kind of, he kind of picked up on what Carl was doing, and and kind of made the gamer car, which was a lot like Carl's car. And in that time, in that time frame, there's a lot of changes that made the cars lighter and faster, and and Carl had uh, something to do with most of that. But, <laughs> uh, it, it was a good, it was a good run. Uh, I just wish it lasted a little longer, and uh, but it was really successful and got my name out there. My first big, big, big time ride, and uh, it was good. And I was listening to a, a podcast with Rick Ferkel on it the other day with Open Red, and he was talking about how he once made a sprint car out of his daughter's swing set. What? And uh, yeah, he, you know, he didn't have enough metal, he didn't have enough uh, stuff, and he took the swing set and he started welding it together and made a roll cage, but. Um, you know, what was it like back? I mean, the innovation was real crazy back in the day. You couldn't do half the stuff you were doing then. I mean, honestly, it was probably damn right dangerous in some of those cars. Yeah, we, you know, had, had an idea. You just did it. Um, you know, we were, I was sitting there one day at the shop and looking at the brake rotors, and, and they were, you know, steel rotors that bolted into an aluminum hat that slid on the axle. I thought, well, we can make these out of aluminum, so I just started Got a sheet of aluminum, cut it out, drilled a hole, and, and uh, made aluminum brake rotors, and that's what everybody runs nowadays. So, yeah, you just did it back then, and, we're not, and, and you had an advantage on most other people because you, you had the, the knowledge of the people around you to do it, the equipment to do it with, and you just did it. Um, nowadays, you just go buy it. Um, the cars haven't really changed a whole lot since then. They, Sprint cars made a big jump from the eighties to say the nineties, but right now, other than maybe availability of them, lighter, a little more simpler, they're, they're pretty much the same cars we ran back then. 
Now uh, let's as talk far as here. And all that. Right now, let's talk here with the 2018, Danny. What does your schedule look? I know you know last couple of years you said you're going to scale back and just stick to uh, smaller tracks. Is that going to be the same plan going into this year? Whenever Mother Nature decides to cooperate with us, and so you can get out there and race. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, a little more 360 stuff. Uh, we got, of course, we got called off everything around Ohio for this weekend on uh, yesterday, and. Um, so we've put our 360 in, and we're going to head to run some 360 stuff, uh, USCS stuff around uh, the Charlotte area Friday and Saturday. And then from there, we're going on down to Florida and run that Bubba's 360 USCS stuff next weekend. So we're going to get to race here in the next couple weekends. We're just going to drive south and find the warm weather to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very cool. Now, you know, you've been around 40-plus years. You've been doing this, and, and you're you're definitely a legend. And you've been around through the highs and the low times of, of sprint car racing. And, and you you hear about, you know, hey, you know, this 410 Vision, you know, this it might not be around too soon. What are your thoughts on that? You know, you, you scaled back just smaller tracks. Is the 410 Division, is that still solid? That's going to be around for many years? Or do you think maybe... 10, 15 years, it's going to go away, and it's all going to be about 360s and 305s. I don't know. If, you know, living in Ohio in one of the three states that has, well, maybe two states now, that has quite a bit of weekly full generation, you, you don't get to pay attention to that much. But when you go out of town and you go to a 410 race, say they have one out, in um, Oklahoma or something, and, and 18 cars show up, and that's because, and most of them for from out of state, and there is no 410s in that area anymore. Uh, Missouri, you know, Texas, uh, their, their 410s are gone. So, you know, Pennsylvania's got the weekly shows, Ohio's got the weekly shows, California's struggling on weekly shows. I don't know if they have a weekly 410 show right now at all. Um, bad thing with 360s is right at the moment you know they're cost a little less to run uh, a motor and you can run them a little longer but the purses aren't near as what the 410s are so I don't know it's, it's kind of in trouble I think it's going to stay popular and we're at that right now but I don't see it growing to some of those other states other than that's the world outlaws kind of all stars come in town for a special race but uh, you know, no 410 racing in Florida, other than the All Stars. Um, a lot of a lot of tracks is that way. So I, I think I think it's in trouble. I don't know what the answer is or or how big a trouble it is. But as long as the weekly tracks that are running right now, 410s can stay alive and they will thrive in the area. It's more regional now than it used to be national. Right. That's that's for sure. Now, I'm looking at here in the, our fully injected motorsports fan zone, and uh, especially my dad, Brian Snyder, he said, Tony Stewart helped get you out to the Hall of Fame induction. And, um, you know, Bob Layton also mentioned that you were part of the talks that helped Tony get involved with the All-Stars. What's your relationship like with Tony? I mean, I'm sure, obviously, he's a good friend of yours. And what do you think he means to the sport of sprint car racing? Uh, as far as All-Stars go, uh that's when Guy Webb had it and was running it in the ground. And and I basically got a hold of Tony and I said, man, this this deal's going to just die. The All-Stars is. Um, you need you need to, if you would, really think about Teldor Speedway going to the Renegade Series, which was going to get Guy Webb's attention. So... That was the first phone call, and he said, "You know, I might just call and see if he'll sell it." So, and, and the rest is history. But uh, the passion he has, you know, he could have started his own series. He kept. He wanted the all stars. He wanted the name. He wanted the history that went with it. And that's the best thing that ever could have happened to the all stars. Um, when he acquired it, there was a lot of people that had money. They all got paid. Um, so, you know, I couldn't think of anybody else better to buy it than Tony Stewart. 
I 110% agree with that. Oh, for sure. And, well, actually, let's scale back here from the 410s back to the 360s. You know, we do got some big 360 racing coming in here uh, at the beginning of May with the uh, Lucas Oil uh, American Sprint Car Series. Is there any thoughts of maybe you trekking out east here, maybe coming to run uh, with the Battle of the Groves at Williams Grove and Seals Grove? Yeah, there is some kind of thought about it. Uh, I really didn't realize that until uh, speaking with uh, Harley Light and them recently that they were coming out there to run that, and uh, that got me looking at it a little bit. So yeah, we will kind of wait and see. And uh, right now, I, you know, I'm 61 years old. I just enjoy racing. I don't mind getting on the road and travel. Uh, I'm just kind of go where I think I can have the most fun and, and do the best I can. And uh, if those races out there um, fit in, we might do that. Still, my motor program on the 360s is kind of like my 410 program. They're, they're decent motors, but they're not brand new. So you still got to have a, a, a heavy hitter motor on them big half miles. And, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I'm going week to week. I'm not making plans too far ahead, so you never know. That's a good way to live. And just for the record, you're not putting Steve Kinzer in your race car, right? <laughs> uh, I had to fire him. <laughs> <laughs> he is son of a bitch. He had to fire him. Well, that lasted long, didn't it? Yeah, that, that, wow, unbelievable. Steve Kinzer actually got fired what? from a ride. Oh, unbelievable. Boy. Well, I fired him real quick. I'll tell you the story. In 76, I think it was, he had not raced yet. And uh, I didn't really know Steve back then because uh, he hadn't raced. Of course, I knew his dad. My dad had a speed shop. I, mean, I had my own car. And, and uh, I got a ride with uh, the next night with Steve Stapp. I was supposed to drive his car. And uh, Steve just happened to walk up. My dad said, hey, Steve, you want to run Danny's car tomorrow night? He said, sure. He ain't never raced at all. He had the helmet and the bag and everything. That was it. So he said, okay, show up in Lawrenceburg and, and you can run his car. And we all we get to Lawrenceburg, and of course that's got four cell phones. And I get a, a phone call uh, to call Steve Stapp. I call him; he can't make it. So when Steve showed up, I said, "Steve, sorry, buddy, but I'm back in my car. You will not be able to drive it." So yeah, I fired Steve Kinzer before anybody ever hired him. <laughs> uh, that that uh, the story is time. I could I could listen to Danny and all the other legends. <laughs> talk for days and just listen to the stories you know real quick before we let you go danny you just mentioned that you're 61 years old we talk about you know brian monteith he, he has it in his head that at 50 years old he's done uh, and i'm sure we can convince him of five more years and 10 more years down the road but for you 40 plus career year you're in your 60s when do you see yourself retiring or you don't <sighs> I don't know. Uh, as long as I'm enjoying it, having fun, and can run 30 laps without the head hitting the right rear tire, I'm just going to keep on going. Uh, Love it. Good. No sense of, no, no sense of quitting because you're, you're supposed to when you get old. Um, I, I remember Gary Russ in Australia. He was probably around 50 when he quit, and I think it was just he quit because he was around 50. And uh, a couple of years later, he told me one day, he said, you make sure you want to quit. And he says, I quit. And God, I make the worst decision in my life. <laughs> said, I miss it so bad. So um, I'm going to keep going as long as I enjoy it, have fun, and win a race now, man. I'm going to keep on turkey. Now, yeah. w real quick before we let you go here, because we're going to wrap things up here shortly, but one of the sponsors on the side of your car for a few years now has been the Coors Light Gang. I was going to ask And you obviously, about that. you know, we're the you know Beer Hill Gang here in Central PA. What's how did that whole deal come about? I, if I'm not mistaken, it was kind of just a bunch of guys that wanted to help you out and get you on the track. Yeah, uh, a friend of mine, been around racing forever and lives in uh, Chillicothe. His name is John B. Uh, he he sells beer, and he was the distributor there in town. Um, yeah, of course they were selling Coors Light beer, and the guy that ran that was a big sprint car fan so john b says hey let's get enough little money and and uh i'm gonna make all these t-shirts up and sell them to my buddies they all they all hang out the races like the beer hero gang and uh make these shirts well and we're gonna call ourselves the cores light gang so they made shirts um 
they bought me a uniform and they made these shirts and they got sponsors for the Coors Light Gang shirts and they sold the shirts and then gave me the money to sponsor my race car. So that's where it came from. And I don't know, it's been five, six, seven years now and it's still going strong. So uh, every little bit helps when you're doing it on your own and you don't have the daddy's checkbook. So, <laughs> and, you know, there's a bunch of good race fans that uh, I've known even before I moved to Chillicothe, Ohio. So uh, they have fun at the races and, and I think they get a kick of helping me out. And the cars like gang rides on. Absolutely, sure does ride on. One more question, Danny. We know a couple people. We're starting to get a little popular in this whole sprint car world thing. If we could maybe get you a 410 motor, could we maybe get you back to the Williams Grove National Open one more time or possibly like a big, you know, test score of 50? One of the two most prestigious races here in Pennsylvania. I don't know. Uh... I don't know if I want to go that fast. <laughs> they go long straightaways. You get a better motor, I not be, might not be able to hang on to it. Uh, you know, one of, one of my decisions was, you know, I don't, I don't know, it was easy to say I don't have the money for the top-notch motors, but they don't. And I, it's true, but that stay on them shorter tracks where you keep your speed down to 100 mile an hour is, is, and if you crash, I ain't going to be able to hang on like I did when I was a kid, so... Um, I don't know. You just never know. Yeah, you Might are. catch me in the right lead. We'll go do it. So. <laughs> hey, and if you're not if you're not racing, you know we always got a spot up on the hill for you to enjoy a few, right. you know, darker beers than that Coors Light you're used to. <laughs> but um, you know, we got yeah, plenty. Yeah. Okay, I love it. Right, get me out there. Forget forget about the motor. We'll just go out and watch it from the hill. Hey, oh, hey, perfect. game on, Danny. Hey, we welcome you with wide open arms. He was saying about having fun. I guarantee you won't have a better time than coming out here to Burr Hill and having a couple beers with us. Absolutely. <laughs> Danny Smith, thank you very much, sir, for coming our show. You definitely made all of our nights, and uh, good luck here this year. All right, guys. Thanks for having me, and we'll see you sometime down the road. Very good. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you very Danny. much. Danny Smith just getting off the Moose's LZ hotline. Boys, that was by far an iconic moment for us in Bear Hill Gang TV. That was awesome. That was flat awesome. I could – you said it great, Earl. You could sit here and listen to these stories all day long, and I know the people here in the Full Injected Motorsports Fan Zone are loving it here, so I'm going to seal your line here. If you did love that, give us some hearts, give us some thumbs up here for uh, Danny Smith coming on here, and maybe we need to convince him to come out. Even if it's not for the Battle of the Groves coming up uh, in May here for Lucas Oil uh, ASCS, why don't I just have him come out for a couple beers out here one Friday night? I'll tell you what, I would love to just have, like, him and Brad Doty and uh, Carl Kinzer. You know, the oh. Kinzer and just have them. I, I don't even need to ask questions. Just nope. let them get going and yep. see where the hell it goes. Put a few beers in front of them. I bet Bring back a, a couple a pack of cigarettes, put some cards <laughs> on the table, and let the night go. Yeah, that sounds like a show idea, actually. Yeah, that'd be wild. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, it's really awesome. You know, we've uh, – you know, we've kind of hit the, uh, you know, hell, yeah. we, we had, you know, Dave Blaney this year. We had Sammy Swindell last year. We had Brad Doty. I mean, we're kind of picking off the, the top guys here. You know, we need to get in touch with Wolfgang next. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. That, that'll that really be great for us. And, you know, think about Sammy. You just mentioned it. Uh, we got Sammy a ride after he got done <laughs> yeah. with our show. So we do have some string. We can pull some strings here, peeps. All right. But we, Sammy, I like, we like to take credit for that. Sammy did uh, have a ride come to score a 50 weekend in the 07. But we're going to take our final commercial break. When we do, we're going to come back and have your Orange Crate weekend preview. Stay tuned. Hi. My name is Tyler Altmaier, and I am the owner and founder of Fully Injected Motorsports and FullyInjected.com a professional short track PR firm that has been in operation since 2010. Headquartered in western Pennsylvania, Fully Injected Motorsports focuses primarily on providing professional grade press to motorsports teams, racetracks and organizations all throughout the country. Keeping your fans and other racing enthusiasts up to date with breaking news, event schedules and recent race results. Our original content and mass distribution service is sure to keep your sponsors as well as your team's biggest supporters in the loop and on track. For more information, contact us today at FullyInjected.com. Now, back to PA Sprint Car Live on Beer Hill Gang TV. As we're taking selfies, we're, I mean, so much is pandemonium here. We got drivers watching Jersey Shore, drivers watching the Masters, drivers just smoking a cigarette, drinking a beer, having a good time watching us. It's another great Thursday night. Thank you, fans, for tuning in once again for us to kick off your racing weekend. And with that, it is Orange Crate Weekend preview time. 
And tomorrow night, Williams Grove gets another Yellow Breaches 500 underway. Yes, sir. I believe that we will for, uh, be seeing this for the first time all year long. An actual back-to-back -back race weekend at the yeah, Williams Grove. Yeah, Justin, they're going to get it in, damn it. Yeah, you, come on, Justin. You Debbie Downer. Yeah. Listen, it's going to be cold. <laughs> Wah, it's going to be cold. Wah. It's going to be no. 60 no, degrees I'll tell you out. What, I, I would like to see them. You know, it would be great to have a three-race weekend, yeah. I think. Um, you know, these tracks put in a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of efforts to get these races in. And I know the fans are chomping at a bit, a little bit. Um, you know, we talked a little bit on our own, and, you know, damn, you know, I think we all are tired of the cold weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be great, but, you know, with that $500 to start, I don't care what they pay for 10th. It's better than normal. Yes, um, agreed. It's um, it's definitely a plus. Um, you know, maybe we can uh, discuss that a little bit more down the road. But at the end of the day, um, big race for them, uh, the 358s, you know. Shout out. We're going to get this out of the way now because I got tired of hearing about it all week. But, um, no, for real, though, Jeff Halligan, great weekend. Um, he won two races last week. The first two races in that Hamaker 66 car yeah. came out. It like good. a like real good. on fire, yeah! Great, great start to the season for those guys. We do love the 358 division. They're an integral they part great, of the Central PA racing scene. Great support scene. division. So, um, t kudos to them, and hopefully, we'll see you at the Yellow Bridges 500 uh, after the uh, 410 feature. Absolutely. Then we move on to Saturday, Bert. Yes, sir. Of course, we'll be hopefully. Maybe at the Lincoln Speedway. I don't know. It don't look too good for Mother Nature right now, but we'll plug it anyway. For the Lawrence Chevy 410 Sprint Cars, the Chrysler Aluminum Wheels 358 Sprint Cars, and the first appearance by the wingless Super Sportsman down at the Lincoln Speedway. And, of course, they made a time change down there. They will be starting racing at 5 p.m. this Saturday night, boys. Absolutely. Then, depending on what happens, you know, we got a twofer on Saturday. Uh, Port Royal Speedway up at the Speed Palace. We're going to go hopefully get another show in. It's going to be the Weikert Livestock 410 Sprint Cards going on with your River Valley Builders, Super Late Models, and your IMCA and your IMCA Pass uh, 305 Sprint Cars. They're going to be up there for uh, Friday night and then this track was in the news as well come Sunday. I cannot wait for this one. After seeing what the surface did last weekend, I'm really excited to see what they can do with it down there. This Sunday for the Bats Mower Speedway, for the Bats 410 Sprint Cars and the 358 Sprint Cars as well. I tell you what, I am... Um I'm looking forward to this weekend. It should be a uh, should be a really really good weekend this uh, this coming uh, weekend. I know. I I dropped the ball. I was. And, uh, you know. Well, you could have messed with someone on the way out here. I, I, yeah, you know. It is what it is. Yeah. Hey, call Danny. Ask Danny. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure you, you can uh, FedEx us some beer real quick. Absolutely. <laughs> and I do. You know. I. You know. My dad. He's on the fire crew out at Williams Grove. He was, he said. Please, people on Bear Hill, stop throwing beer cans onto the damn racetrack. It's not cool. It's not part of what we represent as a sport. And um, I know you guys are having fun out there, but it's a little unnecessary. I don't think it's some of the main people up on Bear Hill. I think it's further in the turn. Uh, some of the new people that don't know how to hold their alcohol. Uh, no, they, literally, they can't oh, hold it because no. they're throwing yeah, they're it. They're throwing ah, it. So clever. Let's be uh, let's be nice, you know, folks. They do have trash cans around the track. Let's put your uh, trash in the trash cans and uh, use that. Uh, drink wisely, by the way. Oh, of course, we always drink wisely. And you know, Responsible. I, yeah. We talked about the, the Wingless Super Sportsman Series. I saw one of our buddies that we talked to at Racing Extravaganza, Garrett Williamson, was going to take the wing off, uh, yeah. and nice. he's going to join them out at Lincoln Speedway. So uh, shout out to Steve Wilber. You know that yeah. whole, that whole division has really taken off more than I ever thought it would have. Absolutely. So. And you see something. I saw something every week so far on social media that he's getting uh, bigger and better sponsors for that wingless tour as well. So Steve Wilber, uh, we tip the cap. Good job to you guys and good luck to all the racers this weekend. Go ahead, Phil. Cue up the music. <laughs> But, hey, we also got something else this weekend. I know you and I are going to look at this. WrestleMania on Sunday. WrestleMania is uh, this week, but I got to work, oh. so I'll probably watch it on demand well, or something like that. Who's your picks, then? You I don't know. I, I, you got me. Just, uh, I don't macho know. Right, man off the top. Ooh, yeah. Nakamura Styles. Who do you got in that one? I don't know. I don't really oh, watch it I anymore like did. I used to. No. Oh, boy, this is embarrassing, folks. This is embarrassing. But, once again, thank you for tuning in to another great episode of PA Spring Car Live right here on Bear Hill Thanks, Gang Brian, TV. this guy. Absolutely. Absolutely, Brian. We love you. You guys do a great show. But that's gonna end it. Thank you for tuning. Ah, thank you for tuning in. Let us kick off your weekend. We'll see everybody at the races this weekend.